The World Champion is going to get stalled up there by the defensive Ice Golems, but she's kind of staying off of the Ice Golems and staying on the King, which is a very, very good thing for her right now. But I'm not sure if he's... Okay, never mind. He's got it. Is that she got it? Um... Are we okay, Rigo? Welcome back to the Chaos Cup. Today, we have a very big matchup between two Titans in Clash of Clans Esports. It is early attacks taking on VA Esports. So, I want to start this video by saying congratulations to early attacks for qualifying into the group stages of the World Championship warm-up. They just qualified for that, and we didn't get to see that war. We were busy watching Tribe Gaming. Which you'll have to make sure you're checking the rest of the channel here if you want to go see what happened with that war. Because that was a pretty wild one. As they tried to qualify a second uh, team as well. But while I'm chatting, Dobbs Ben, who... I don't know if you guys heard, but Dobbs Ben just recently set the world record for the fastest attack ever done in Clash of Clans Esports. He had a 57 second attack there. He's currently the world record holder. To my knowledge, I haven't heard of anybody going faster, but I know, I know a lot of people were asking what, where they could see his previous attack there from when he did that. And unfortunately, I don't think anybody was actually streaming that war, so it was just kind of lost into the ether. We just saw it uh, from something else, from like reports from the war. But he's kind of struggling on this one here. So the e drags end up following pretty heavily short. And he's going to have to clear out the rest of the interior of the base there with just the heroes. Now, the heroes definitely could have the punch to power through this. He's got the queen with the one healer there and the unicorn. He does get the defensive world champion to jump the wall over there. He's got the defensive king up top there. And he's going to be largely dependent on this world champion to sweep out the interior of the base. And what, what angle do you approach in from right now? King taking a little damage here with the expo, but he decides to put the world champion into the very, very core. And at least he got the ice golems out of the CC so he can fight them with his queen and king rather than with the world champion. The queen is sustaining through the expo fire and maybe, maybe taking that expo out of the equation there for the world champion can give her enough punch here. But she just lost the, the uh, spirit fox here. And guys, I don't know if this is going to work here. Is our, is our attack going to go through here? He needs to get past this multi-arch tower. Queen... Trying to hang on there. If she goes down, she... Oh. Rip. <laughs> well, I was not expecting that to happen. But that is the opening attack of the war. And it is a miss for a world record holder. Achilles is in with a queen charge into Lalo. All right, let's see what this Brazilian player can do playing on this, like, really weird... If you guys haven't seen early attacks play recently, when they played in the World Championship, they were running almost a pure Japanese team. In fact, I think, yeah, every single player that was actually in Finland played on their team was from Japan. However, their roster here is containing a lot more variety. They got Muhammad Marawi. They have... Heroya and Yada were from the original team there, but then they picked up Achilles out of Brazil and then Rigo Torres out of Mexico. So kind of a great, like this is like the true definition of an international roster, just kind of gathering all the all-stars across the world and bringing them onto one team. And this has been a very strong team as a result. We'll see what he can do as he continues to make his charge forward here. The King will pop his ability and clear out the left side compartment, getting down. The Inferno and will push into the defensive king, but that's about the end of his track there. But if he can get the defensive king out of the way there and clear the way for the world champion to move in that area, then he's still going to be in a good spot. But the king, with a phoenix, head on his right there, getting the defensive king or keeping that defensive king under control. But the queen pushes her way to the core of the base there, gets down the town hall. She's going to be under monolith fire here in a moment. Halo's do get targeted. She gets pulled forward by the tornado trap, but he's not going to delay the Lalo. He needs to get in there to potentially save her. She's going down, though. I don't think there's any way to save her, but he does get the Halo's to transfer safely over to the Royal Champion. He's going to get the extra support out of her as a result. But well, down south here, Flame Flinger opens up into Yetis and a Rocket Blue, which go directly at the Monolith. Going to get that under control. And over the right side, we have the entire right end of the base there under control. This is crushed. Achilles gets it done. An early attack takes an early lead against Veterans Alliance. Ghost going in for the next attack. We are going to be seeing some lightning to pair with, looks like, Riders and Super Barbarians. Just taking out the Spell Tower and taking out the Monolith and a couple of Battle Builders around it. So, we know that the Monolith can do a lot of damage there, but... What are we going to... We're going to... 
going from the left? What? Okay, this is this is not typically how we see Rue Rider attacks go. But let's also let's keep in mind that VA Esports and really both of the teams are not being forced to do fast attacks now because of the miss on the board. So as a result, we could see a little bit more variety in the different attacks that we use, where they're not just going to be trying everything they can to rush through the attacks and try to win in a time tiebreaker in the event of those perfect wars that end up happening so often lately. But it looks like the Queen going to push her way towards the Town Hall. And you'll get a little bit of extra tanking there for uh, the Root Riders. And the Queen will arrive at the Town Hall, but it needs a freeze on it. Freeze it. Make sure the Queen does not go down. She's very, very, very low HP. But all the beams of the Town Hall will go to the Root Riders next there. So we didn't necessarily need to put another freeze on it, but it's still pretty decent value. And that'll keep the Root Riders at least moderately topped off here. And the Queen is not going to find any relief there unless he's got a healing tone, which he does. Which he does. He can pop that now as it goes in the multi-inferno area. He's going to take an eagle artillery strike. It would be a good time to pop it like right now as those eagle artillery strikes were in the air. But he pops it after the eagle artillery strikes there as he's pinned down by the ice golems. He's going to get past that. But battle drill up at the very top of the base there. More root riders being dropped into the top of the base as well. Trying to keep everybody from having to loop out of the base. But he needs to get through this heavy, heavy block right here. And without the support of... Well, I mean, the Queen was able to top off back to half HP, but she's swinging wide right now. She's going back, though. This Queen is actually coming in clutch, considering how close she was to going down. But she's recovered very, very solidly now. RC continues to push through. She's got the haze file. She should be able to power through the rest of the defenses right there. As she pops that and will search for it there with the Spirit Fox protecting her at the same time. And that will clear out the rest of the defenses. He's got it under control, I think. All right, Queen's gone. RC, we okay here? Yeah, we're fine. We're fine. All right. Another triple on the board here. The first one for VA Esports. I think it is kind of uh, an underwhelming piece of equipment here. And for the cost of epic equipment, I don't know how much use we'll see out of it. It feels like another like gimmick piece of equipment there, kind of like the uh, Giant Arrow, which some people really, really like. And they will break it out there to do some interesting things. But I think the Giant Arrow is like a better version of it because it's more easy to aim that and have a long distance shot to take out key targets. So I don't know. I I think the the entire game is going to be taken over by Super Dragons with everybody getting uh, free activations of them for a little while. So I guess we'll see that throughout the event there. But as it stands, it is going to be... It's going to be, it's going to be an interesting piece of equipment. You should definitely unlock it. I, I would always say that whether you go the free to play path or the the buying the event pass which usually event passes usually come with a whole bunch of extra ore and so you can get a lot of your other equipment upgraded even if you don't upgrade that specifically so i think it's still worth it to get the event pass there for a couple bucks there and if you do buy anything in this game if you do buy event passes and such then make sure you use a creator code if you want to support the channel directly here use code eric i really really appreciate it and it does go a long way to help out the channel so Let's get into Muhammad Marawi as he just makes his way in with the Queen charge in from the right side. Able to get the Eagle Artillery down. And now we'll have the main force shoot across the bottom of the base and go towards that Town Hall. Gonna go ahead and blimp it out. Blimp taking a couple traps along the way there, but the Ward Ability protects it. And are we seeing the Healing Tome? Nope, we're seeing Rage Gem in that. Rage Gem is definitely viable with the Root Riders. Either make them do more damage so they move faster so they have less opportunity to take damage or heal them and keep them alive in that way. But either way, I think the damage output when you get the King and the Ward, the King, Warden, and the Argus Ward doesn't get benefit from his own Rage Gem there. But uh, the Ward Champion and the King definitely do. And that extra damage output can get them through and get the defense down before the Root Riders die. But the King will pop his ability over to the left side and the Queen has continued her charge all the way past that Eagle Artillery, all the way up across the top of the base there. We'll step her way in and pick up this Multi-Inferno, and there's nothing left on the base here that can slow him down. He'll start to swag the rest of his spells. And remember, time is not a factor, so they will sustain their lead here, but it's only a nine building split. So if they do make a mistake at any point during the war here, we could see the swing very realistically. Let's say that you are trying to direct the Warden fireball into like a key defense you still have to use the warden eternal tome and waste his other equipment to be able to take advantage of that and the eternal tome is too strong right now 
everybody is using the eternal tome with everything else and so you're effectively sacrificing the most powerful troop in the game the warden with that eternal tome which is one of your biggest defensive tools and you're just taking it out of the equation i i think that this is in my opinion a very underwhelming piece of equipment i still will unlock it though i will unlock it I will make sure that we have access to it so that we don't have to pay gems for it later on just in case it ends up finding a use case scenario, but I doubt I'm going to upgrade it. That's my point. I'll definitely still break it out. I'll still make sure I unlock it, but I'm probably, it's going to be very low priority for me to update, upgrade it because it's going to be using up all my star ore and I need to be using that on the frozen arrow and the giant gauntlet mainly the giant gauntlet on my account here i'm pushing the giant gauntlet and i've stopped pushing the frozen arrow and i will eventually shift over and start pushing the healer puppet instead but look at this we do get the we do get the town hall down with the sea goblins the kill squad down south there with the log launcher runs all the way into the monolith the king over the side is able to clear that compartment the queen over the right side was able to split off from the kill squad and she gets that compartment out of the way and he's just attacking the base from every different side of the base simultaneously and he's not even using root riders to make it work that's what's interesting here he's doing what we typically would see with like uh with root riders and lalo and he's doing it with different troops and he is able to get it done valkyries eight of them with 28 super barbarians a very very interesting attack here off meta and max gets it done but look at the skelly donut that he started this with he started it with the bats taking out two infernos and the ricochet cannons and then the clan castle like that's a lot of value i suppose one use for this fireball would be for the people who like to do those blimp opener attacks like the super archer bombs because in all those attacks the eternal tome protects a blimp and then the second piece of equipment usually ends up going to waste and so you could use the fireball in those attackers so it just kind of depends on what your attack style is to decide what value you'd be able to actually be able to get out of that for but for most people for like the for the spam meta right now there's not really a major use for it to be able to just like toss it in when you're just putting in a wall of troops there which if i'm doing room out of spam which i usually am lately then that's the way that i'm gonna go i'm gonna go in with i'm gonna go in with the other equipment and try to keep the root alive and get their damage output increase there but if you are doing a super archer bomb and you are one of the players who likes that attack there and you like to be able to protect your blip and not waste the other equipment slot there then maybe that attack is for you maybe that equipment is maybe that's the only way that we could use it efficiently i don't know interesting either way heroia able to get the skelly donut to take out the monolith and the clan castle queen gonna wrap around here but the town hall is not activated so at least she's not taking any extra damage he does cut off her pathing up ahead there with a couple of balloons remember the balloons will if the building is touching the defense on the outside of the base right there then the balloons will splash damage and hit both of them and cut the funnel there to push the queen inside of the base he's got the battle drill working in balloons in from the top of the base and getting the cleanup moving nice and early trying to cut out the pathing up at the very top corner as quickly as possible to make sure that the heroes go inside of the base and work with the Lalo as they make their way forward, but not really focusing so much on time. A lot of times people are attacking every side of the base there at the same time lately to try to get these Lalos to go through even faster, but he takes his time because there's no rush here. He doesn't have to rush because of the current state of the war, but he'll go ahead and get that Rogue Champion to go invisible there. He's spawning the Hog Puppet. He's got the Haste File, and that gets her through the defenses and will push across the back end of the base there. Easy day here. Royal with the Life Gem with a new equipment of the Rogue Champion using Frozen Arrow, and of course, Giant Gauntlet is still our number one priority but I, I really don't think that this new equipment for the ward is going to see wide use other than the people who like the super archer bomb i think outside of that i think it is going to see very very little amounts of people actually upgrading it to max but i guess we'll see most of the pro players are not using that attack right now so we'll probably very very rarely see it in pro play hades was on early attacks when they originally qualified the world championship unfortunately he wasn't able to get out to finland and so we didn't actually get a play in the world championship he had some visa issues and unfortunately then uh Naomi was able to step in and fill in a spot there when they played in the world championship but now 
He's over here playing for VA Esports. Switch it up a little bit. Very, very strong player. Very strong addition to the roster. We'll see what he can do into this attack as he uses that lightning to wipe out the internal defenses and then gets the heroes to connect to it. The queen with the healer puppet will push her way towards the monolith. And if he can get that monolith down, he's going to be a spotlight. The monolith will target onto the uh, the healer instead of onto the queen. And that gives him the protection that he needs. Can he get this ricochet cannon down? If that goes down, he gets the eagle artillery as an extra bonus. And he does get it through it. All right, here we go. <laughs> Hades looking good on this one. Get the Eagle Artillery out of the way there. One shot went up in the air there. We'll hit the Lava Hound, but that's not too big of a problem here. Blimp will sail in, and he can use the Ward ability to protect the balloons. And with the Warden, using the Healing Tome here, that'll heal him right through the Scatter Shot Fire, the Multi Inferno, and the Multi Archer Tower. He's taking some Red Air Bombs, but he'll heal through that as well. And the Queen, I guess she's going to pass the Healers off with the Healers. The Healers ended up cleared a bunch of traps in the core of the base there, including the tornado trap. But the balloons have taken a lot of losses already. Road champion pushing through. Keep an eye on the defensive heroes here. And that multi inferno. The multi inferno is the biggest line of defense right now in the base. And I'm not sure if he's going to get this. He's got a couple of troops going to the backside, throwing in giants, wall breakers, trying to do anything he can to keep his world champion safe. But he does finally get that Inferno down, and he will potentially get the defensive Grand Warden down if the Warden on offense would help with that. But he does get through it, and he does have some damage going to the defensive world champion right there. Working it down slowly. Keeping her distracted. Pops the RC ability. She's going to get the defenses down. Defensive of her champions still give him a little bit of trouble here, but I think he's got it under control. So it looks like Hades will hold it together. It was a bit shaky. Let's be honest. But the world champion will get through, and the defensive world champion will stay standing to the end. Rigo Torres will try to keep the triples rolling in here for early attacks as he goes in with the zap and the Lalo. Zapping out the left side. Of the center, getting out the multi inferno, the monolith, and a couple of other smaller targets there along with it. But you'll want to get the eagle artillery down here, connect to the holders created by the lightning, the king of the queen pushing their way in. Baby dragon forming the funnel there, sneaky goblins forming the funnel, driving the queen inside of the base here. But the king is taking the same path as the queen, and he's gonna stay right there in front of her. But that may push the queen over to the right. Yeah, it does. Okay, that works out because now the Queen picks up the Multi-Inferno. I wasn't expecting that interaction, but that is going to be the best way that this could have played out. The Queen is going to get this Wizard Tower down, and then she'll attack a wall, and she will not make it any further. That's fine, though. May or maybe she could survive if the... Oh, she lost the Unicorn. Never mind. Okay, well, the Blimp will go out to the Town Hall here, and the Bloons will charge in and find a Tesla farm around the scatter shot. Looks like the blimp is able to arrive successfully. No issues with taking the town hall down. Can he throw Yetimites backwards? Gets the defensive grand warden down. And then, is that a skeleton spell? I see a, I think a skeleton spell, or maybe it's a poison, on top of the defensive uh, single inferno right there. But more boons to the back end. It can just completely surround the base. Gotta get the defensive world champion down. Got some skeletons that were used down south here. Keeping the defensive king under control. Giving a chance for his world champion to get past that. But the World Champion is going to get stalled up there by the defensive Ice Golems. But she's kind of staying off of the Ice Golems and staying on the King. Which is a very, very good thing for her right now. But I'm not sure if he's... Okay, never mind. He's got it. <laughs> Does she got it? Um... Uh... Are we okay, Rigo? I mean, he's got the percentage that he needs to get through here. But the defensive World Champion is going to intercept him. And he will power through with the help of the Warden. Okay. <laughs> I was a little worried there for a second, especially if the World Champion continue to stay onto the Ice Golems and then get pinned down right there under fire. Then we may have seen a different result. But as it stands, it is a triple. Rigo Torres going to hold on for one more attack, and the opportunities for VA Esports to get a defense are starting to run out. Oh, giant bombs. <laughs> Imagine if the traps took him out there as they cross the base. But not going to happen. Azus. Hey, Zapper to Lalo. Has to get the triple here. If Jesus misses this triple, then it's over. Has to be a triple, doesn't matter the time. But he uses lightning to take out the defense's interior. But this expo hammering down this king. King is going to be able to make his way with the giant gauntlet and will clear out the defensive queen. 
And get that multi aim further down. Can you get the grand skills out of the way there? They're barely going to slow him down. But he starts in the Lalo in from the right side. And will pair it with the blimp to go win after the town hall. Now Poison Tower throws the blimp. And then the blimp lands on the other side. So Poison Tower is negated by an approach like that. Or champion already starting at the top of the base. They're not delayed on her. Trying to get all the cross tanking. And the cross tanking is always just a generally good practice. But... In the current meta, it also speeds things up here as well and makes for, makes for some lightning fast attacks. The War Champion easily pick up the Scottish on the backside. The Multi Arch Tower over the right there going down. And this base is dismantled. But look at the attack time of this one here. Like, if this war was coming down to time, then Jesus really, really booked it on this one. He can go in and pop that RC ability whenever he wants. After I guess through these ice golems. Take him a second. He pops it there. Hits the last of the Sorges. You take a minute to cross back through, but he's got the haste file. Yeah, he's got the haste file. <laughs> haste file and seeking shield to try to move even faster. This war comes down to this. Yana's in. One more attack to decide the war. Yada has the pressure on as he goes in with the Rude Riders. Just gonna take out the exterior building to make so that all the Rude Riders are going to stay together using the storage as a split point here to make so that they will travel as a pack but unfortunately the queen may end up walking off to the left here she's gonna stay forward i guess the grass guys may pull her forward but he does get stuck in the twitter trap like your bomb going Ooh. uh oh uh oh blimp misses blimp misses town hall stays standing and everybody's walking away all right, well, that's a problem, but the other oh, ruins are going back to it now. They're making their way back that direction. He's got a couple of way went over the right, and luckily they do end up going to the town hall, and it activates right at the perfect time on percentage, and so he didn't take any extra damage on the approach. And now the question is, can we recover the right side of the base? Yeti's popping over there. King getting targeted by the single Inferno. Or no, he's not getting targeted. He's, he's fine over there for the moment. Queen staying safe behind the room right is over to the left. Got the defensive King out of the way. Maybe okay. Hard to tell right now. King and Royal Champion taking damage together. The Spear Fox already went down. RC ability still there. The Phoenix picks him back up there. Spawns the Hogs. Hogs and Seeking Shield get some damage out. But the Hogs immediately find giant bombs. But get through the single Inferno. Queen looping back around. Defensive Royal Champion is the only line of defense left on the base here. And the Scatter Shot is. Uh, I mean, the Sky Shot and the Defensive Road Champion are going to shut down by the King under Phoenix right there. And it looks like he's going to carry through regardless. The Queen still has her ability. He's got it under control. Looked a little bit shaky there for just a minute. But in the end, Yada will push early attacks to another perfect war. It seems like all we see out of this team is perfect war after perfect war after perfect war. And they will sustain that record right here as they will get a win in the group stages of the Chaos Cup against their biggest rival.